Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us. This is Business Incorporated coming to you live from Lagos. I'm Chimeze Ubi Iwago. Now, the International Energy Agency cuts its forecast for global oil demand for this year and next. Qatar Petroleum shows interest in the Mozambique gas business of Italian energy group ENI. Plus, the International Monetary Fund sets to lift a suspension on payments aimed at helping Guinea-Bissau emerge from years of political turmoil. We begin with the global markets and um, in Asia, markets were mixed, giving up earlier gains despite slightly better than expected China data and a dovish speech by Federal Reserve Governor uh, Lel Brainerd. Australia's ASX 200 ended down 0.23% after opening up more than 1%, weighed by losses in the energy sub-index, which was down 0.69%, and its financial sector, which fell 0.69%. The Japanese benchmark index in the K225 closed up 0.34% of an earlier high of 16,707.06%. South Korea's KOSPI finished up 0.4%. Mainland China markets were mixed. The Shanghai Composite closed nearly flat, up 0.06%. And the Shenzhen Composite ended up 0.621%. In Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index was down 0.112%. Now, the International Energy Agency has sharply cut its forecast for global oil demand for this year and next amid what it called wobbling Asian demand. The fresh data is set to intensify the debate between oil producers later this month in Algiers after about whether they should freeze their production in its closely watched monthly report, the IEA, which advises oil consuming countries on their energy policies, downgraded its global oil demand predictions by about 100,000 barrels a day for this year till uh, growing by uh, 1.3 million barrels a day. Uh, this and of course some um, series of data coming out from Germany, UK and China and uh, have their impacts on the European markets um, today. Let's cross over to Frankfurt Stock Exchange, where my colleague Conrad Busen is waiting to talk to us. Good afternoon, Conrad. Thank you for joining us. Now, data released today in Germany uh, shows German inflation rate falls by 0.1% in August. And, of course, in the UK, we have inflation rising 0.6% year uh, on year in August. What does this say of these two economies? Well, this basically in the, illustrates that the economy in the United Kingdom gets to feel the consequences of the Brexit referendum, while Germany's economy does not. You can particularly uh, tell that this is behind it when you look at the increase of import prices that UK companies had to pay during the month of August. Um, materials and fuels bought by UK manufacturers rose by 7.6% in price in August and that's after a 4.1 increase during the month of July. Of course this has to do with the steep fall of the British currency, pound sterling, uh, after the Brexit referendum. For the moment this increase of import prices that companies have to pay has not been translated to consumers yet. The uh, statistics office in London says there has been little sign of this feeding through to consumer prices. Uh, and I continue to quote, the statistics office said that business importing materials from, imp uh, import business importing materials from abroad are facing significantly high companies now must choose whether or not to uh, in consumer prices, it's very likely, Chimmy, that soon UK consumers will have to pay the price for this Brexit referendum. Well, I guess they are already paying for that. But then looking behind you, I can see the DAX tilting uh, downwards. Perhaps it's not just um, reacting to that data from Germany. But then let's look at um, the prediction by the uh, the projection by the International Energy Agency, which, of course, cut its forecast uh, for global oil demand a sharp.
be for this year and next? Could that be what is affecting the DAX there? Uh, is that a concern for the market at this time? I have to say uh, the concerns uh, on the stock market about what's happening to the oil price are not as big as they were at the beginning of the year. Remember, when we saw this steep decline of oil at the beginning of the year, there was a strong correlation between the uh, decline of the oil price and the decline on the stock market of uh, equity prices. This has changed, and I will tell you why. At the beginning of this year, the concerns were big among investors that the falling oil price could have a very, very negative impact on American oil producers, that they uh, would cause them to shut down, to go bankrupt, or make them unable not to pay their debt. But during the last months, uh, American oil producers have cut down their production output significantly. Many of those oil producers have closed down completely, which means that now uh, the concerns are not that big about those American oil producers. And that's why we don't see a correlation of a falling oil price. Uh, the price of oil has been falling after that announcement of the International Energy Agency and what's happening on the stock market. Of course, that doesn't mean that people are not concerned because as the IEA, the International Energy Agency, says, that next year it sees China and India's economy to be wobbly, well, of course, that's something that investors have on their minds as well. Now, let's look at that um, Chinese economy here. Now, uh, some data coming out there, of course, is showing uh, that um, the foreign direct investment there rose 5.7% to 85,000 uh, 85.88 billion dollars at the end of August. What does this now mean for China's growth outlook? It's very reassuring news. It counters concerns that uh, money could continue to flow out of China. But on the other hand, now foreign investment is on the rise again. That also means that investors from all over the world start to believe again in the business case that China represents. And of course that trust is somewhat being supported by other data we got from China also. Industrial production in China rose and also retail sales significantly on the rise. Retail sales are up 10.5% in August and that also supports the uh, idea that the transition of the Chinese economy towards a more service-oriented economy has continued and that's good news of course right thank you very much um, uh, conrad for your time we will we'll keep uh keeping a tab on those um data as they come in thank you for your time now in the u.s um while the market is about to open for business today stocks trade slightly higher uh, on monday following a big sell-off on friday owing to interest rate high concerns. Jill Maladrino, VOA Channels TV business correspondent in New York City, reports from the Nasdaq market site. In just over two months, on fears the Federal Reserve will soon raise interest rates, that continue to spook investors out of risky assets such as equities. In fact, on Friday, all 10 of the S&P 500 sectors were down, with telecom utilities leading the way, while tech and financials relatively outperformed. Now, this makes sense. The telecom utility sectors have been strong in 2016 because investors have been using the strong dividends as income sources, since bonds and other fixed income instrument yields were so low. This all happened because Boston Fed President Eric Rosengren, historically dovish policymaker, said the U.S. Central Bank faces increasing risks if it waits too much longer to raise interest rates, and it should gradually tighten monetary policy. Now, the next interest rate decision is just about 10 days off. On September 21st, the probability of a rate tightening at the September FOMC meeting has gone up. On Friday, it was a little bit lower the Thursday before. So why is this mini sell-off, why was it such a big deal? Prior to Friday's move, U.S. equities have been stuck in trendless range-bound trade for nearly two months. The S&P 500 had closed 44 consecutive days within 1% of an all-time high. That's an extremely long time, considering the last time this happened was in 1995 at 48 straight days, and 1965 saw a 47-day streak. This is all according to LPL Financial Research. Let's take a look at what Nick Cole is chief market strategist at Convergix has to say. And he makes an excellent point here, and I agree with him. 
especially with the way the media was reporting the sell-off into the close on Friday. It was simply not a bloodbath in stocks because of a rate hike. That was Joel Maladrino, VOA Channel's TV correspondent reporting there. After the break, Nigerian Stock Exchange invites 86 dealing firms to appear before its disciplinary committee to stay with us.